Hi, my name is Suzanne Pattinson and I am founder and design maker at Soul Purpose Jewellery and Kona Craft have kindly asked me to film a day in the life of a jeweller. Uh, so I'm going to be taking you through a uh, a typical day, um, although I think most people will agree that no two days are the same, which is what makes it so interesting. Um, so just a little bit about my journey. So I launched Soul Purpose Purpose back in March 2020, approximately three days before lockdown. Um, I'd done a 10-week evening silversmith course in the winter of 2019 and as soon as I'd finished that 10-week course I was absolutely hooked and I just knew that this was something that I wanted to uh, build on and um, and make into something that I could do full time. So I went about my business, um, launched Soul Purpose very, um, you know, very quickly. If I look back, it was very quick. Um, but I soon decided to invest in my branding. Um, I got a designer on board and um, my husband made me a bench and I worked from our spare bedroom. So I'm happy to say that I'm now in year two. Um, of the business and since launching Soul Purpose we have relocated. We were uh, based down in Suffolk at the very beginning. Um, my husband is in the Royal Air Force and uh, we decided to relocate in August 2021 up to the northwest of England which is where we're originally from. So now Soul Purpose is based here and uh, at the moment I'm actually working on embedding the brand um, in the northwest of England. It's always been online and um, because of Covid and because of lockdown. Um, and the rules so now it's time for me to get out there meet people network and also um in terms of sole purpose and where i am heading with it i want to not only make jewelry but i also want to teach so i'm at the moment setting up a series of workshops in the local area which is really exciting and um, so i will be taking sole purpose on the road to um, lots of different locations and teaching beginners just how to make simple things like stacking rings and uh, statement earrings, spinner rings, things like that. So yes, it's super exciting to sort of finally put down our roots and um, move the business forward. So just a little bit about the types of jewellery um, that I create and my um, style. I love statement earrings. As you can see, I'm wearing um, some of my own sole purpose earrings here. Um, I love uh, sort of strong lines and I adore texture. If I can put texture on everything, I will. I've always been a fan of texture, even before I became a silversmith. Um, I like sort of mixed, uh, mixed metals. Um, and I adore really irregular shaped stones. So um, here we've got a ring that I did um, recently. Uh, this lovely Larimar here. I do get quite a lot of commissions, which is good. I work on quite a lot of commissions, uh, which are great. And I do obviously have my um, general sort of stock items on my website. Um, here's another Larimar, nice uh, sort of statement, statement ring there. I also really enjoy making things that can be layered. Um, so it can be layered with other pieces of jewellery. Here is another uh, Larimar and I enjoy you'll probably tell, um, sort of stars, moons. I like to sort of add a, a, a sort of small touch to my pieces. Um, so that's that one. And then this beautiful shaped kyanite here, which again, is just a very simple claw setting. Very delicate teardrop shaped kyanite with a star charm here. And then the back is sort of, um, I don't know if you can see that, but I've kept it quite sort of open so that the natural light can get through there. Um, but as I say, these can be worn and sort of layered with other necklaces, which um, which I, I quite like. So yeah, that's a little bit about, about my sort of style of jewellery. So the very first thing that I have to do before I even function my during my day is uh, make a coffee. And... Uh, Maybe it's since I've started working at home on my own, but I've become a bit of a fan of coffee and I have to have 
like decent coffee. It doesn't help that I live across from a Starbucks, so I have to stop myself. So yes, I will be having a, this morning, a French blend. And uh, I have my very cute mug that was bought for me from a friend. I have been dubbed the girl who puts the glamour into hammer. Oh, there we go. So I always start my day with um, a walk to school and I finish my day with the walk to school. I'm back, there and back. Living in the Northwest, although it looks like blue skies behind, it's actually snowing. So yes, uh, I do find that it sets me up for the day and um, sort of good to get some exercise in before I sit on my bench all day. But yeah, living in the Northwest in London is often very, very cold and either wet or snowing. So I always start my day off with just 15 minutes of admin, whether that be uh, making content for my social media, updating my website, SEO, or inputting finance um, stuff into a spreadsheet. It's a recent thing, and it's something that I have to force myself to do because I can quite easily just start my day at the bench and then none of that stuff gets done. So since the beginning of this year, I have been um, very, uh, very consistent and I'm hoping to continue that. If, if it does run into 30 minutes, 45 minutes, that's fine. But I have to do the bare minimum of 15 minutes per day. So that's what I do. I start my day at my laptop and then once I've done that, I can then move on to to making and I do find that it focuses my mind quite a lot it focuses me on what I need to do um, what kind of things are coming up and um, how I need to structure my day also within that time I update my planner so I am a big fan of having everything written down I do have it all on google docs as well um, but I love a planner and also um, because I have two children I have two small boys and and, uh, their schedule and business and my husband being in the RAF it's just really important to have stuff written down otherwise I'm likely to miss things so I do find this a really good tool for me and um, this one is a weekly planner and yeah I just I just fill it out and uh, you can do progress trackers and goals and plans for the quarter and then plans for the year and then plans for the half year so again this just helps focus my mind because I have so much going on in my head about what I want to achieve with Soul Purpose and um, what avenues I want to try and what I want to do and where I want to be in five years. If I don't write it down, I just, well, yeah, my head would just be absolutely jam-packed. This is my best friend. <laughs> This is my business best friend. So yeah, I would recommend if you don't have a planner and you like a visual, then to get a weekly planner and keep it, keep it updated as much as possible. So today I'm working on a couple of pieces. I've been through my uh, work packet, seeing my work in progress, and um, I'm going to sort of crack on. The first job that I'm going to work on is this uh, lovely commission. As you can see, it, it's ready to go in the pickle. I soldered it yesterday and um, started the piece yesterday. It's um, a key design. It's going to be a static, um, static necklace. So the chain will come off either side. And it was based on a design, uh, not actually a, a, a jewelry design, but it was based on a logo. The customer wanted it to be a heart, but not be a heart. But she's also really into kite surfing and windsurfing. So I tried to sort of incorporate that and make if you can see make it more into a wave on the bottom and a wave on the top um, and I've kind of left it open because I think that it, it just kind of gives it that little little bit extra and then the key bit the lock bit of the key here I need to really sort of refine that piece there but her name um I'm not sure if she might be telling you but her, anyway her name begins with a C so um I've sort of adapted the original thing that she sent to me. So this needs to go in the pickle and then I need to clean it up, give it a good file, but I also need to add some texture because I love texture. Uh, she's given me sort of quite free reign with it. I told her I would do it in pure soul purpose style and she was happy with that. So um, it's quite a nice one to be working on. I, um, but yeah, first of all, it needs to go in the pickle. So I will do that and then I can, once that's done, I can start to give it a good file and start to add in some of that texture using my Dremel. So I hate to be that person, 
but safety first. Um, no, I'm a big believer in uh, protective eyewear and I don't have to worry too much about tying my hair up because it's obviously very short. I pretty much live in these. Um, fun fact, I used to work in an optician's years ago when I was about 17 and I used to actually work in the lab making glasses. Maybe that's where this obsession with making things comes from. So I understand the importance of eyewear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sound very dull, but uh, I mean, who doesn't want to wear these? I think they're quite fetching. Uh, so yes, safety first. And then now I'm going to decide what texture and probably going to be maybe a bulber and put some texture onto maybe one of the waves of the, um, of the key. So this is my studio here, still to be completed, still not got my artwork on the walls, um, but I'll just give you a little walkthrough. So here we have um, my trusty rolling mill that I could not be without, disc cutter and doming block and, and set. I don't tend to use those here, um, but that's just because they're quite big, that's where they need to live. I then have um, my order um, areas. I try to keep everything in brown envelopes, um, so work in progress. This is for my website, this is uh, workshops, this is for a website that I'm on called Runner's Gifts, and this is for Not on the High Street, because I'm actually a partner on Not on the High Street. And uh, so yes, yeah, so these are my sort of, this is where I sort of organize all of my orders. This is where I sit and do my admin and uh, general sort of catalog and things um, and then you move around and obviously pegboards I mean I went a little OTT and covered the complete wall but it is very very helpful and there we have my sort of main making area um, I have everything labelled into small pots, which helps me with um, just being able to access things quickly some more artwork up here I like to be surrounded by creativity from other people which is nice and then over here some more organization of pots and uh, files and things and um, so main soldering area is this corner I try to keep everything in sections we don't need to talk about this messy area of wires um, that is TV barrel polisher and then here is where the um all of my photography happens um, and here is my photography box and this is my post box and then over here is where i put all of my orders onto my board and this space here is where i do all of my packaging but yes this is really where sole purpose happens Okay, so whilst that's in the pickle, because uh, that's going to take a little while because I've only just switched it on, um, so it'll take a while to heat up, I thought that I would share with you my favourite tools. So apart from the obvious, which um, I think is my Durston rolling mill, which is actually a very recent purchase, I only got that um, in sort of September time. So my rolling mill, yes. My Dremel, yes. My disc cutter, my Durston disc cutter, I adore. Like that saves me so much time, like so much time. Um, so apart from those, I thought I would show you a couple of things that I have actually come across um, and been recommended through people that I've met on Instagram and through tutorials I've watched. And um, like I say, because I'm self-taught, I sort of try and pick up lots of hints and tips where I can. So the first one that I'm going to share with you is oh, quite sort of popular anyway, but these burnishers, these agate burnishers, I've actually got quite a few. <laughs> so somebody recommended these to me and I have to say they are brilliant. They are absolutely worth their weight in gold. Um, so I, for stone setting, I absolutely swear by those. Okay, so secondly is this deburring tool, I think it's called. Again, I saw this on Instagram, I think. I'm all about efficiency. Like, I feel like if something's going to make it a quicker process and an easier process, then we should definitely see it as a business investment. So this is definitely worth, again, with its weight in gold. I use this 
mainly for rings and it just saves me a lot of time, saves me a lot of time filing, gives me a nice finish. Um, so yeah, I absolutely would recommend one of these. So again, this little set um, saves me a lot of time and it's really perfect for the very fiddly, small tube set stones. So each one just goes onto its little handle and you just, um, you just push down with it and twist and it honestly, again, just saves me so much time when I'm setting small stones. And like I say, I think that's, a, you know, a good, a good key to business really, isn't it? We spend so much time hand making these items and if there is a tool that can help you along that way and make it more efficient and a quicker process, but still give a really, really good quality finish, then that for me is worth investing in. So yeah. And then finally, um, I mean, this goes without saying really, but these little scales, I've had these since probably day one, because obviously um, in terms of weighing stuff for the assay office, um, and also weighing things to be melted down um, if I'm using, like recycling any scrap. Um, this is really good. Uh, and yeah, I've had these since day one and they are, can't live without them. These are another uh, workshop essential for me. I've got really good eyesight, but when it comes to doing intricate work and like setting small stones and things like that, I just find them absolutely brilliant. And they have a little light on the top that you can then focus onto your work and they come with various different lenses. So yeah, I can't, um, can't stress how important these have been over the past um, few months. And I do recommend the Dremel. I am looking to upgrade to a Fordham and that's not because Dremel's not great and I will keep this. I've had this since day one. I was so scared of using it to begin with. <laughs> I didn't know what it did. It took me about six months to actually use it to its full capacity. And even now I probably don't, but it's brilliant. It's absolutely a game changer for saving time. But the reason that I want a Fordham and I have tried one is because of the foot pedal. I just find better control uh, when using a burr. I just find it's a little bit more intuitive and it's a, just a bit more controlled. And because I do a lot of texture and um, stuff, this can just be a bit a bit clunky, if that makes sense. But I will keep this um, and use it for other things. So yeah, I um, definitely see value in having a pendant motor, for sure. Okay, so this is out of the pickle now, um, but it does need a lot of tidying up. So I'm gonna start by just getting my files on it, maybe a sanding disc with my Dremel, and then I am gonna decide exactly what I'm gonna do texture-wise. But my initial thought is to maybe texture the bottom piece here, up to sort of the middle of the heart. Uh, that's not a heart. <laughs> um, and then, maybe leave this top bit a high polish but i'll see how i go and um see how it feels when it's uh, when it's all filed and and i've given it a bit of a sound So I actually decided to put some of the ball burr texture um, onto the top one instead of the bottom one and I'm really happy with my decision to do that. So now I'm going to clean up the rest of it and I'm going to, I'm going to actually do that by hand. Um, sometimes I have used a rubber, one of the little cone, rubber cone attachments, but it's not quite, it's not quite the right one. Um, so I'm going to get out my, um, just my emery paper and emery sticks. I will eventually use the 3M polish, polishing papers on this, um, which I think are just incredible. But I will need to, um, before I do any of that, is I'm going to solder on the bales so that I can then attach the chain. it 
from me thank you so much for watching and sticking with me um i've just been for a quick run but now i'm about to wrap up my bench and go and pick my boys up from school um i will probably do a little bit of work this evening but it'll be on my laptop on the sofa maybe with a glass of wine um no more bench time for me today but thank you um to kennel craft for asking me to come and share a day in the life of soul purpose jewelry and um on Instagram or Facebook please do um, I'm always happy it's for Anatta um, I'm sure all of you are aware uh, of the joys of working on your own it can be quite lonely sometimes so yeah completely free to uh, answer any questions or um, just have a chit chat generally with other jewelers all right thanks so much take care bye